Hey guys, it's Kirby, and I made a fun video of the first project I ever did using a pattern kit. Now I found this cool pattern kit at a thrift shop. It makes two bunnies with carrots. Now it comes with all of the patterns that you need. You cut them out from this paper here, and it comes with a list of instructions and the fabric and supplies that you'll need to build your bunny. It comes with two different sets of fabric, orange and linen, two big old cotton balls, some twine, some ribbon, a sheet of raffia, two cute little pink pom-poms, and four little black buttony looking eyes. Like little black plastic half domes with a flat back. The instructions were likely typed out on electric typewriter, and it's made by a gal named Cindy Elder from 1993. So you're going to want to go ahead and cut out the patterns carefully. Now you see where those lines are? Those little, those two little lines? You'll see here in a minute, I'll point to them. Remember those. I'll talk about them in just a little bit. Well, the fabric's been folded up since the 90s, so you're gonna wanna iron that bad boy and make it smooth. Smoothie, smoothie. And do the same for the orange, ta-da! I was amused here when I went to trace my carrot pattern because uh, Cindy, girl didn't play. She didn't play with wasting fabric. She gave you more than enough of the linen, just in case, I guess, if you made a mistake, you'll have a little bit to work with, but she expected you to get those carrots aright the first time. On each of the paper patterns, it tells you how many that you're gonna need to cut to make two bunnies. Now I was looking at the design of the bunny and I saw their arms were crazy. They were like flat and then they were ropes and they were tied into a knot and I just, I didn't like that. So I didn't cut out that pattern for the arm because I wasn't gonna be down with no rope arms. I wanted actual stuffed animal arms. So I just figured I was gonna cut that pattern out myself, just sort of make something up as I went. So I went ahead and I pinned the ears, right sides facing each other. And I'm gonna sew along the arch of each one, keeping the bottom open. My sewing machine is a Singer Heavy Duty sewing machine. She's the best. Now remember to backstitch all of your stitches, beginning and end of all your stitches to keep it all secure. And I like to use a chopstick to help turn my items inside out and to use the tip to poke that last sharp corner of the tip of the ear to make it nice and shapely. So turn all of your ears so that the seams are on the inside. Then you're gonna wanna fold them. Fold two of them like that and lay them side by side. And then I pinned them and then I sewed the bottom. So they make ears. So now I got two pairs of bunny ears. Now this is what I made up for the arms. I wasn't quite sure how long I was gonna need them, so I figured I would just make them a little longer than I probably needed, and then I could trim them down if it was too long. Better to be too long and then trim it down than have it be too short and then you're screwed. So there are my arms and ears. Time to stuff the arms using the filler. After I had an idea of how big the body was going to be, 
I knew about the length that I wanted the arms to be, so I knew I had to cut it down. And on the pattern, there were a couple notches that indicated where you'd put the arms. So you, if you hadn't made that marking already, you could always lay your paper on top at this moment and make the little marks, so that way you know where to put your arms. Put the right sides together, the little um, sides there. Pin your arm in place. I made sure I overlapped it a little bit to make a secure stitch. You just stitch right along the one side there where I pointed. Take your two new pieces, your half circle pieces, with the arms and you lay them right sides together. Make sure that you match the seams up in the center and all the shape of the rest of the pattern. Put the arms along the bottom so that they're not in the way. And let me just say at this moment, I realized that good old Cindy um, had some areas in her instructions that were pretty vague. I had to figure some stuff out on my own. I figured out that you had to put the ears in this way. Um, I've never really made a, a stuffed animal before, so it all makes sense when you think about it. Things have to be on the inside, all that stuff, but you know, this is my first time following a pattern. So after I figured it out, I pinned the ears in place along the top seam, make sure it was lined up properly, and you sew along the edge right there. Revealing, ta-da! At this moment, I got really kind of excited because it was really starting to look like a bunny. Oh my gosh. Do a little dance, oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's coming to life. Time to sew the legs. Keeping the bottom open like a sock. Then comes the fun time of turning them all right side out. Of course, I had to use my little chopstick because it was a little potato in there. Tried to get the seams out as much as I could. Then you gotta stuff them legs. This is the bottom. Where the notches are that I'm indicating, um, the last part there you keep open when you sew it all together, and the first areas I pointed to is where you put the legs. Now, at this moment, I was still trying to figure out how to put the legs because it didn't tell me how to put the legs, so I had to try a couple different times, think about how it was gonna be. And I pinned them in place and I sewed them. Then after I thought about it and tried to see if it was correct, I had a feeling it was wrong, and it was wrong. <laughs> so I had to turn the legs this way, with the toes, toes pointing up to make sure that after I pop the bunny out that it will be correct and not have backwards legs. Ugh, the frustration. So them into place and now it's time to put the bottom on the little pom-pom looking bunny ball. Kind of looks like a crown, don't you think? Please work, please. I know. I didn't film me sewing it because it was just kind of awkward to sew with the bundle there. And that's where I left it open. That's where you're going to have to pull out all the little pieces, the legs, the arms, the ears, and just pull it inside out. And this part was very exciting. It was like watching an egg hatch. And there's a foot. What else is in there? What else is in there? Oh, there's another foot. Oh, the little feetsies. And an arm. It's reaching. It's reaching for me. And there's another arm. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I thought it kind of looked like a, like a squid creature. I think I see the ears coming. It's coming. Oh my gosh. Almost hatching all the way, and 
Pop goes the bunny. Oh my gosh, here we go. Look at him. Oh, I was very excited in this moment. I was like, there he is. Ah! Everything's facing the front. The ears are correct. The arms and legs are correct. Oh, I was like, oh my gosh, look at him. Look at this boy. And he's doing a little wiggle there. He's so happy. Oh, -ho. very happy to be alive. Time to stuff the rabbit. Gotta put all that stuffing in the bunny body. After you're done stuffing the bunny, then you're gonna have to sew the opening shut, but you're not gonna use the machine, you're gonna use, you're gonna hand stitch it and I used a hidden stitch or also known as a ladder stitch and I recommend that if you don't know how to do that kind of stitch please look it up on YouTube there are some really good videos out there that show a close-up instruction how to sew the ladder stitch I recommend watching that but after securing my securing my thread in place then I take the opening where the fabric is, fold the two ledges down almost like lips, and then I just kind of, from the inside of the lips on the inside, sew one side a stitch, and then go directly on the other side of the opening, and on the other lip ledge, sew that one. And then when you pull it closed, it just it tightens it up. You don't see the stitch. And it's great. It's really good for repairing stuffed animals if there's a, a tear in some stuffed animals. Time to make the rabbit's food. The little carrot. Or the big old carrot, if you're doing size comparison. You just stitch up the one side, you pop it open, inside out, you stuff it, and then you're gonna do a basting stitch around the top. You don't wanna stuff the carrot too full because you're gonna need that give along the top so that when you pull the basting stitch shut, it'll be able to um, shut more closed around the top. You're not going to want to pull it tight all the way and seal it off because you're going to have to put the greenery in the carrot. So don't tie that off yet. And this is the sheet of raffia. I've, I've never really seen raffia in a sheet like this before. And the instructions was not great to tell you how to cut this. So I just kind of figured, and eh, how to do it. So I just cut it in half so I could have two of them. Got two carrots there. Then I just cut some tassels along the top and bottom, leaving the in, keeping the center uncut. Like that. Then I folded it over. Sorry that I'm off screen a little bit. I got like into my work and then I wasn't able, like I didn't pay attention to the screen that was on the camera and I was like, whoops, oh well. Anyway, I folded it in half, folded it kind of in half again, and then twisted it along the bottom, creating the little bundle there. And then you're gonna need a hot glue gun. So I put some hot glue on there, put the raffia stick in, held it till it was dry, and then pulled the basting stitch tight, tied it off, tried to tuck it in a little bit with my fingers so that the fabric wasn't sticking out too much. And that was it for the carrots. Time to make the facial features on your bunny. The little bom bom cheekies. So you take the circles, you roll a little ball of the filling, and you're gonna make another basting stitch. Just a little back and forth to tighten it up. And you kinda feel how big it's gonna be and I figured, up, so I put a little bit too much on there. So I just picked a little bit off. I finished the stitch. I tightened it up. And I... 
put a couple extra stitches along the back to seal it up, tie it off, and then you glue it in place with a glue gun. Make sure that you hold it long enough for it to stick. I didn't glue the nose yet because I kind of wanted to see how the, the face was going to be. I wasn't totally sure whether I wanted to use the eyes from the kit. I almost thought they were too beady because, I don't know, like I was looking at the picture of the bunny on the package and the nose was different on the picture of the bunny. Like they must have changed the design. So then it almost seemed like that the nose was too big and the eyes were too small and I didn't know. So since I was still deciding, I figured, hey, I'm going to ask a couple of my friends. I gave them these options. I had a couple of different pairs of buttons from my sewing kit. And all of the feedback that I got really liked the beady eyes that it came with. They thought it looked really adorable and really cute. So that's what he got. I went ahead and I hot glued the tail on. I ended up covering up the stitch that I made, so I guess it didn't necessarily have to be a hidden stitch. But it's nice to know that he was having a nice hidden stitch up, even if it was covered. I didn't want to put the hot glue for the eyes because I knew that it just isn't as strong as like an industrial glue. So I use E6000 as my glue. I use it a lot when I make jewelry or do random crafts that I need to have a strong glue with. And then I glued the eyes on. Look how happy he is, oh my gosh. And at this moment I was like, I don't know, his muzzle seemed like it was a little, a little loose. You know, like it could be a little more secure. So what I had thought about doing is I'm gonna run a secure stitch that goes between where the nose and the cheek is, and it's gonna go all the way through the body of the bunny from the inside, and I'm gonna have it come out through the seam on the back, and I'm gonna tie it off, and it's gonna be nice and secure. Time for some bunny plastic surgery. When I first watched this footage, I was like, dang. Viewer discretion advised. <laughs> That's fine. He didn't, there was no pain involved. He was fine. After I did this, I felt a lot better because I just felt like I was able to pull it, give him a little facelift, you know. And I think the bunny likes it too. What do you think, bunny? Yeah, he likes it. <laughs> Next on the instructions, it tells me to put the twine whiskers in using a larger needle with a big enough eye. I tried to put it through several times uh, to no avail. I was having some struggles. What I felt was the best technique is that I just cut the edge fresh again and I used a little lighter and I, I just singed the edge just to make it hard so that it wouldn't like unravel and it'd be a pain in the butt. Now we're going to watch me struggle. I kept this in here because it was amusing. <laughs> I 
couldn't pull it through. I, I was trying not to rip his face off. And I was trying to pull the twine through, and it wasn't working. I, I don't have the SpongeBob SquarePants finger strength. So I figured, eh, I'll get some tweezers, maybe that'll help. It, it didn't help at all. So, you know, frustration rising and all that. And I figured the only thing that's going to get this job done is a pair of pliers. So, time for the pliers. <laughs> What I would uh, take away on this experience is that if you decide that you want to make a bunny like this, put these whiskers on the cheeks before you glue the cheeks onto the rabbit. That way you don't have to worry about not pulling the cheeks too hard. I was going to pull the needle off and like restring it and stuff, and then I figured, wow, it was kind of a pain to get the string on the needle. So I just went ahead and I pulled it all the way through. That way I don't have to restring anything. There was no real instructions on how to do this part. Um, so I figured that you just tie a little knot in each one. trying to keep the knot as close to the skin as possible. And then repeat on the other side, trying to keep it relatively symmetrical. And you can always trim the whiskers down. I, I kept them a little long and then I trimmed them down. Look at that cute, handsome boy. Such a cutie patootie, oh, so happy. Oh, look, he's looking up at me. Next, the instructions say, put the ribbon on the ears. Now, let me just say right off the bat, I didn't like the ribbon on the ears. But just for the sake of completion, I went ahead and I put this kind of ugly looking ribbon on just to say that I finished it. Sorry that the camera keeps like getting fuzzy. Anyway, yay, ugly ribbon. But no, we're gonna take this thing right off again. Nope. <laughs> You don't like that ribbon, do you, Mr. Bun Bun? No! Well, that rabbit really wants to hold this carrot. So it's time to help our little friend hug his precious carrot. Now, he doesn't have the weird rope arms that the original design has. He's got some squishy, lovable, huggable arms. And we're just gonna put a little stitch right there, just a single stitch, just to keep them closed. Make a little cradle for the carrot. Just sewed it, tied it, and cut off the excess, and he's all ready to go. Gonna slide that tasty, tasty carrot in. And that, my friend, is a happy bunny. Look at how adorable he is. So cute, Mr. Bun Bun, ta-da! From picture to reality. Oh, how wonderful, he's so happy. <laughs> wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> Oh, look at that tasty, tasty carrot. So good for you. <laughs> oh, God. That was fun. A little fun journey for our fun little friend. <laughs> Just in time for Easter. Here, have a bite. I also have a few other patterns. I have this weird little pig pattern. And I have a cow pattern. Leave in the comments which one you think I should do next. And I can film it if you like. The very last step on the instructions is to take a blush or eyeshadow in a pink shade 
and tint the inside of the ears. Now I only had a few shades of pink in my collection and it happened to be from the Jeffree Star palette, Thirsty. And I chose the shade Bitch. I started off light at first and I went ahead and I built it up. Didn't want to overdo it. So this bunny is getting the gourmet makeup treatment. Of course, at this moment, the Thirsty palette is no longer being sold. But I'm excited for all of his new palettes. Very excited. I need a lot of them. Look at his cute little face. Oh, the bunnies. Well, a few days later, I went ahead and I made the second bunny out of the kit. So both have been born. And they just so happen to be available for sale on my Etsy website, Kirby's Curio. You can adopt one or both of these adorable brothers. Thank you so much for watching my journey. And tune in next time.